Hello, everyone. Just wanted to give my quick thoughts about what I picked up yesterday in covering the Clemson-Notre Dame game. Clemson obviously got the 31-23 win over the Irish yesterday, a rather big win as far as what it means for their season. Also, making Dabo Sweeney the winningest coach in Clemson history, surpassing Frank Howard with 166 career wins. So congratulations to Dabo Sweeney, especially given how last week went for him. Really, as, as far as how the whole entire season's gone, Clemson, of course, yeah, they had the motto that best is the standard, and that standard is what Dabo so proudly clings to is what he's established for this program. And you know, it, they've been far from living up to it this season. Clemson was 4-4 four and four coming in. He had back-to-back -back losses to Miami and NC, NC State coming into this game. And this whole entire season has just been marred with all kinds of different problems. They, had, they were one off from Nebraska with 10 lost fumbles coming in. Nebraska had 11 as the national leader in fumbles lost prior to this week. They've had so many red zone turnovers. They've just been absolutely killer for them. And you've also had moments where Cade Klubnick's inexperience has come up. You know, obviously, you had the moments where it's been thought that Cade kind of went rogue, like right there at the end of the Miami game and then at the end of the Florida State game. Uh, where he had the RPO that really he shouldn't have had the option to even pass on, and he did, ended up losing the game on that one. And then whatever happened at Miami, I'm still trying to figure that one out myself. <laughs> I don't know that anybody really truly knows what was going through Cade Klubnick's head in that. Maybe not even Cade Klubnick, but yeah, at the end of the day, his experience is, inexperience has led to some rather costly mistakes for Clemson, and so that's been a contributing factor to their lack of living up to that standard so far this season. And Really, coming into this game, fans are kind of thinking that Clemson would do well just to get to 6-6 six and six and get bowl eligible this season and just play in an early early bowl season bowl game. You know? and for a program where best is the standard, obviously for a fan base that also holds to that the, with heavy expectations that they had, then that's something that understandably is making them frustrated with how the team is performing. You, know, you, you had the infamous caller Tyler from Spartanburg earlier this week into Dabo's call-in show that expressed his frustration and disappointment with Dabo Sweeney and obviously the entire fan base doesn't necessarily agree with Tyler. Tyler actually really did kind of step out of line with his personal attacks on Dabo in my personal opinion but Dabo's response to it just kind of showed that Dabo's just as frustrated as anybody else with it. I mean at the end of the day, Dabo didn't necessarily just straight up attack a fan here. And this wasn't something that was staged or rehearsed like a lot of people would try to claim here. It, it, it's something where you could tell based on the passionate response that Dabo gave that it's it's been building up for a while. He's been getting frustrated with this. He's been feeling the, the pressure to win and try to get his team back up to that standard. And he knows they're underperforming. He's not stupid. He knows he's got to make some changes. I think that he will in the offseason. But at the end of the day, if you can't really read too much into Dabo's response. All you can say is that obviously it was pent up frustration in him, too, and he just had to vent. And unfortunately, Tyler from Spartanburg was the straw that broke the camel's back and made it happen. But at, at the end of the day, again, if the program with the expectations that the best is the standard establishes, Clemson hasn't been living up to it. And they needed to win, not just to shut up the Tylers of the world, but really just to kind of bring some stability back to this season and really to the program. So Clemson needed to win in the worst way almost coming in Saturday against Notre Dame. And that win wasn't going to come easy. You know, Clemson had a lot of injuries coming into this one. Will Shipley didn't play. He's listed as day-to-day -day, probably from here out. Justin Maskell was also out. That was a big loss on defense for Clemson. Uh, Dabo revealed that Tyler Brown didn't practice all week. He did end up playing in the game. I guess it was a game-time decision, but he had a nine-yard touchdown reception on the team catch the game. Then Dabo also revealed that Cade Klubnick was hurt earlier in the game. He didn't get any meaningful reps in practice until Wednesday. So there were a lot of question marks with injuries and everything coming into this game as well. And obviously a lot of Clemson fans are looking at this game as eh, they do good just to try to keep it close for a little bit. It's Notre Dame. And they were ranked in the top 15. 15th in the AP poll, 12th in the college football playoff poll. I'm going to bet that backwards. I'm not sure. But yeah, a lot of Clemson fans are looking at this and they're thinking, well, we're going to get the crap beat. So naturally, when they were playing so well in this game, but there was a, an air of shock, but also an air of excitement in the stadium. But yeah. early on, 
Notre Dame was moving the ball with relative ease, but you had to give credit to Clemson's defense because one of the things that made a big difference to this game was that you know, Notre Dame's first three trips into the red zone all ended in field goals. And on the flip side of things for Clemson, you know, they made two, uh, they made three red zone visits in the first half themselves, and two out of the three they scored a touchdown on. So they were scoring touchdowns. Notre Dame was being held to field goals. You got to give credit to Clemson's defense on that one because they. They were the very picture-perfect definition of bends don't break, especially there in the first half in this game. But you know, probably the really the key difference of this game, you think about it, was Jeremiah Trotter's pick six. I mean, that may very well have been the difference in the ball game. You know, Jeremiah, as it is, had a big day. He was all over the place. Eleven total tackles, seven of them were solo. He had two sacks, two and a half tackles for a loss to go with that pick six. But in reality, outside of that pick six and everything else, Clemson didn't necessarily outplay Notre Dame. I mean, both teams are moving the ball well. Stat lines are almost even, both in the first half and in the post-game stats, really save for time of possession and turnovers and first downs. So Clemson won the turnover margin, which was big for them in this one. Yeah, they won that turnover margin 3-2. to two. Difference with Notre Dame is Sam Hartman had two interceptions, and of course they had that turnover on downs there that basically sealed the game late in the fourth quarter. Clemson, you had the interception that was deflected off uh, it was deflected and led to Notre Dame finally scoring their first red zone touchdown and returned down to the two-yard line. That was on Clemson's first series there in the first half. And then he had the Phil Moffa fumble late in the fourth quarter. But other than that, Clemson didn't make any costly mistakes in this game. Their offensive line played really well. Phil Moffa was fantastic, really made a big statement to possibly get more touches even when Will Shipley does come back, who, again, is listed as day-to-day. So we might be seeing a lot more of Phil Moffa from here out anyway. Moffa had 186 yards on a single-game record 36 carries and two touchdowns. Cade Klubnick, by the way, 13-26 to 26 with 109 yards in the touchdown plus the interception. So really, this game hung in the balance for really all the way up through much of, much of the fourth quarter here. You know, Clemson held steady to that eight-point lead. Again, did end up winning it by eight, 31-23. to 23, But it, it seemed like every time in the fourth quarter when Clemson would get the ball, they'd get it at or near midfield and... This is really how they put this one away. They they flipped the field. I mean, they yeah they would go three and out. So Notre Dame's defense did their job. But you know, credit to the special teams. They kind of played their own version of South Carolina's Beamer Ball, Beamer Ball 2.0, whatever they're calling it down there. But yeah, you know, Cade had a a punt on a play that Dabo kind of jokingly called a PPO punt pass option, where apparently it's been in the playbook for a while. He just hadn't ever really called it up to this point. He said it was in the playbook and they were waiting to use it for like three years in this post-game press conference, but it's just, it's a simple kind of thing where they line up like they're going to go for it on fourth down, quarterback's going to roll out, and if there's a receiver open, throw it. If there's not, punt it. And Cade took the, the punt option on this one and punned him deep inside the five-yard line, flipped the field and really flipped it for good on that play. Besides Cade Klubnick, you had to give some credit to Aiden Swanson, too. You know, Aiden Swanson, I think, had four punts there the fourth quarter alone. Pinned Notre Dame inside the 10 twice, inside the 15 once. So, again, credit has to go to Clemson's defense. They forced a three and out on three of Notre Dame's last five series on offense. The two that they didn't force a three and out on were turnovers. You know, they had the pick, and then they had that game stealing turnover on down. So, the field flipping performance on special teams, the defense, particularly Jeremiah Trotter, Phil Moffa, and then just the fact that Clemson didn't make as many mistakes as they normally did, and they did the opposite of what they normally do when they did make a mistake. Seems like so many times this season, you think back to that, that interception there at the, in the first series of the third quarter, a lot of times Clemson doesn't respond well after they give up a turnover that leads to points to the opposition. They end up either committing another turnover or going three and out and getting sloppy. That didn't happen this time. They got right back on it, and as a matter of fact, they answered perfectly to score a touchdown on the next, very next drive. So at the end of the day, Clemson responded really well to when they made mistakes and limited the mistakes in total. So that's really what won this game for them. They made a statement with this win, and now you've got you've got four more chances to get bowl eligible. You've got four winnable games left on your schedule. You've got Georgia Tech, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and a bowl game. So you've got four more four more chances this season, and realistically, you still could finish eight and four. You realistically could finish nine and four with a bowl game win. And given what a lot of fans are feeling coming into this one, you know, they would have taken that because a, a week ago, after that loss to 
North Carolina State, a lot of fans would have given you the Tyler treatment if you had told them that they were going to have a chance to still win nine games this season. So they made a statement. Now the question for Clemson going forward is, how will they back that statement up? You had a big one here against Georgia Tech. You've got three more chances to win that six game. You're going to win a six game. You're going to get bowl eligible. The question is, can you put on a little run here at the end of the season? Did this game against Notre Dame potentially completely turn your season around? How are you going to back up that statement win? But again, congratulations to Clemson. The big 31-23 to win over Notre Dame. An upset in Death Valley yesterday. And it got Dabo Sweeney his 166th career win to make him the winningest Clemson head coach in all time.